It's Thursday Night Live. We are so, ah, oh, it's so good to be here and to sit down on this sweet little couch. I've had a crazy day, crazy week at work. I don't know how many of you have. I'm sure I'm not the only one. Um, and gosh, all the things that have been going on in current events, the explosion in Beirut, um, gosh, just, I'm sure a lot of you um, are praying for their families and their loved ones, those that are injured, um, those that lost loved ones. I mean, what an incredibly tragic mm -hmm. thing. Um, life is just so unpredictable, isn't it? You just never know. I remember as a child in Buffalo, New York, standing in front of a friend's house, and um, we were talking, and the building on Niagara Street blew up because it was a gas leak. And it just exploded, and we all just stood there and lot. I mean, I look back and I think, well, it didn't take out the whole block, but it took out the whole building. Mm. And um, life's just really unpredictable. There's no guarantee here in life. It's certainly not always going to be a rose garden. We've been told we're going to have trials and tribulations. But what is so exciting about the God that we serve is that he has overcome the world and that we are victorious in him, no matter how it may look to the naked eye or may seem in our hearts. Um, we're always victorious in him. Mm -hmm. So we press on. We press on. For those of you that are pressing on, I just want to say, I'm rooting for you. Let me know. If there's people, if we can pray for you, please send us out a shout mm -hmm. so we can lift you up in prayer. But we're just so blessed that uh, so many of you are following us. We look every, when we see views, we don't know how long you stay on, but we hope we can keep you at least for a little bit of time and you're encouraged and, and fed. And so... Without further ado, we're going to just, we try to keep these short. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to pray and my husband's going to share with us and I'll share a little and we hope it just gives you a little food for the mm -hmm. week, yeah? Mm -hmm. So Father, we thank you so much for tonight. We thank you for bringing us together. We just pray you'd move in our midst, move among us, open our eyes and our ears to hear what you're saying. Lord, mm -hmm. we thank you for this garden series. We thank you how beautiful gardens are and how we receive so much when we walk through them and we know you as well. So, Lord, we, we know that um, you're speaking to all of us in different ways. So keep us open and soft. Soften our hearts with your Holy Spirit even now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay. Um, I'm going to do just a really quick overview for those of you that are just starting with this one right here. Um, uh, it's a planting God's garden, uh, an intentional diversity. A garden is not like a farm where you're growing one pr product or one crop and you just blow it out. Uh, whereas a garden is a mixture mm -hmm. of a lot of things. And so we, we are, we're going through this series because we think that we feel that it's important that uh, we understand how diverse we are as people and to celebrate diversity and to recognize that all the diverse plants that you bring together, when you bring them together, they benefit one another. Mm -hmm. They help each other in so mm -hmm. many ways. Mm -hmm. And so we were looking at that over the last few weeks. Um, you know, God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so yet within that, we have over 5,000 ethnic groups in this world. And within that group where there are 6,900 languages. So you can see how diverse we are as people mm -hmm. in our cultures and how we see things, mm -hmm. our worldview, everything is different. Religions, you know, whatever. Uh, just so many different uh, varieties of, yeah. of uh, who we are as people. But we're all human beings. We're all a part of the one species. We're mm -hmm. one. And so um, so the Bible is a story of gardens. You go throughout scriptures and you'll see the Garden of Eden. You see that's where the fall happened. Uh, you look at Heaven's Garden. There's a tree of life where it says that its leaves are for the healing of the nations. And that's another beautiful story of how everything just kind of closes at that point where there's mm -hmm. this healing and beautiful things going on there. And so um, my wife had shared a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, about preparing the soil, you know, getting your heart ready and mm -hmm. taking out rocks. And, you know, sometimes there's disease or there's all whatever. You have to pull things out and work through those so that your heart could be ready to receive the, the plant, you know, whatever God wants to plant in you. And so then we, after that, we spoke about um, the vine, you know, pruning back the vine so that it could bear more fruit. And also it's a, it's a time where God just looks at every part of us and he lifts up the things that need to be lifted, you know, because they're hanging on the ground and mm -hmm. it's picking up some things from the earth, you know, so God will lift it up so it grows like a vine, mm -hmm. you know, so it grows up, you know, and it bears the fruit, the maximum fruit. And that's really God's heart. And um, then last week I, uh, we spoke about grafting of how we have been grafted into this incredible rootstock 
which is the uh, the Jewish nation. You know, the when God spoke to Abraham and said, "I'm going to bless you, and you are going to be a blessing to the nations, all mm. people." Right, and we have that blessing because of our faith. Um, that uh, we have the salvation, we have the promise of eternal life. Those are all things that came through Abraham's line when God started to reveal truth to him. And so, um, and so we're a part of that. We're a part of that connection, right? And so, um, which leads to um, tonight's uh, message. And it's, it's uh, basically as we're growing a garden, we're given opportunities to, uh, to plant seeds, you know, every decision that you make, it's almost like planting a seed. Mm -hmm. Is it a good seed or is it a weed? You know, um, you have mm -hmm. throughout your day, you have the opportunity to plant a good seed or a weed. And the, the thing about seeds is that if you plant it this morning, it's not going to bear. You're not going to have it by that afternoon. Like I can't plant an orange seed. Mm -hmm. And then by this evening, I'm expecting an orange to be to show up on this plant. Right. It's not it's going to need to take years of working it. And sometimes we plant good seeds and we just don't know if the you know how long before we see the fruit of that. But I just want to encourage you continue to plant that good seed. Continue to work this garden of your heart. Continue to be faithful and work mm -hmm. through this. Uh, because, you know, as you know, weeds grow like this. Mm -hmm. But good fruit, good plants, it, they, they take time. Mm -hmm. They take time. I remember we had a planter here at the church that we we couldn't keep the geraniums alive. So we somebody put fake geraniums, and they were really pretty. And they looked really good until the sun faded them out. And um, one day I happened to look at the planter, and there was a real geranium in it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, how did that happen? You know, the Bible says that the wind blows as it will. It's like the Holy Spirit. God is always moving. There were seeds that were blown into that pot and dirt, and it grew a geranium. Next to fake, that were in fake, like styrofoam, a real geranium. And I was just like, if God can make us plant a seed and bring dirt out of nowhere, how much... God's in the business of doing the impossible mm -hmm. and he's in the business of planting seeds in your life mm -hmm. where you don't think you're going to be able to blossom. You don't think it's going to be able to happen. But I want to tell you today that seed the Lord can put in your heart and bring forth fruit that will shock not just mm -hmm. you, but everyone in your life. That's right. That's right. It reminds me of a scripture. You know, the harvest you reap reveals the seed that was planted. Mm -hmm. If you plant the corrupt seeds of, of our self life into this natural realm, you can expect to experience a harvest of corruption. Mm -hmm. But if you plant the good seeds of a spiritual life, mm -hmm. you will reap the beautiful fruits that grow from the everlasting life of the Spirit. And mm -hmm. so so we have the opportunity to to plant seeds. And we just, uh, the question is, where are we gonna, what are we going to plant? And what are we going to plant it in? Mm -hmm. In our natural, natural flesh? Or are we going to plant it into the things of the Spirit? Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like, that's the transition or the, you know, it's like making the decision. If you have this seed, you have to ask the question, is this seed that I'm going to plant, is it a part of the me? Or mm -hmm. should I plant it in something that's more of a we? How is it going to benefit those around me? Mm -hmm. And then ultimately, good. is it going to be he? Is it because God is saying, I want you to plant it here. That's good. So it's so we grow as people from the me to the we to the he. And that that's all based on where you're planting your seed, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and then you'll see the fruit of that, yeah. right? Yeah. And so, um, so this, this, uh, you know, partnering with, uh, the me, we, he, when we get to the, we and the, he, um, it reminds me of what leaders are to do. You know, leaders are to help you grow. Mm -hmm. Um, God has raised up within the church. He's raised up apostles, prophets, missionaries, mm -hmm. pastors, teachers, It says so that his people would learn to serve and his body would grow strong. Mm -hmm. This will continue until we are united by our faith and by our understanding of the Son of God. Then we will be mature, just as Christ is, and we will be completely like Him. And so that is the hope uh, in our lives. That mm -hmm. So when we are trying to bear this good fruit in our lives, it's the desire for God is that we would be more like Him, mm -hmm. right? To be more Christ-like mm -hmm. and uh, or to be more godly, right? And And so that's always the hope and the intent. For our growth and maturity mm -hmm. and so God has raised up different leaders to do that to mm -hmm. help one another and it actually one of the interesting things uh, in some of the other translations it talks about 
uh, so you could understand what your ministry is. Because each one of you has a ministry. I, I, just because I'm a pastor does not mean I'm the only one that ministers. You minister. Mm -hmm. And God has uh, an anointing and he has a calling in each one of your lives to make a difference. It could be at home. Mm -hmm. That's why it says, you know what, just bloom where you're planted. Right. Meaning that trust that God has planted you there for such a time as this. Mm -hmm. You know, we need, we call it the Esther hour. It's like, take that chance, step forward and know that bloom where you're planted. Know that God is doing a work in mm -hmm. your heart. Mm -hmm. And the fruit are not only going to be enjoyed by you and your family, but those in the community you live. That's right. You know, and, and uh, you know, when you ch try to bloom where you're you know, planted, remember that it takes patience, mm -hmm. you know, to, to grow a garden. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes, you know, we, yep. we go someplace and we just wonder, man, am I making a difference mm -hmm. here? Is this, is this even, should I be here? Should I continue? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's, that's a good question. We all have those, you know, yeah. because especially when, when we're discouraged and we think that it's just not changing or we're not seeing the result we're hoping for. Uh, but I just want to encourage you here in Galatians 6, 9, it says, don't allow yourselves to be weary or disheartened in planting good seeds. For the mm -hmm. season of reaping the wonderful harvest you planted is coming. Mm -hmm. And that was an encouragement that Paul was giving to the Galatians. He said, look, just just mm -hmm. don't worry about it. Just keep planting. Yep. Be faithful. It's coming. That's good. You're going to see. And then once you've planted and you or you've grafted in and you've done all these things, right? Now you've got this beautiful garden and it's very diverse. You have different plants growing there. And it's helping one another. They're growing beautifully. Then, let's eat. Let's, let's eat. get the food. Yes. Let's go get the fruit. Then comes the vegetables. The harvest. Then it. comes the harvest. And what is the harvest? In the things of the Spirit, it's the fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, in Galatians 5.22, it says, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Mm -hmm. Love, joy, peace, mm -hmm. patience, mm -hmm. kindness, mm -hmm. goodness, mm -hmm. faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Mm -hmm. Those are the spiritual fruits that God wants us to, to, to have within, in, our, in our lives. And that reflects who Jesus is. That's mm -hmm. why we become more Christ-like is when mm -hmm. we are living this out. When we recognize those things are within us. God has planted his seed already it's in It's kind you. of like when you mm -hmm. let the Holy Spirit, when you are open and pliable to what God is doing in your mm -hmm. life, the Lord, it says, you know, even in the beginning of time in Genesis, it says the Spirit was hovering over the waters. I feel, I, I imagine that the Lord looks down and sees when the fruit's just blossoming in our life and he smells the fragrance. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about that. But it's like he gets to enjoy the fruits of his labor. Mm -hmm. I remember a dear friend of mine um, that I worked with in Buffalo in ministry. When I got called out of Buffalo to come back to San Diego to help with my husband's family, he said, you know, I just wish that you could see the fruits of your labor. And it really blessed me because I had been there for a while and investing and putting in a lot of seed and hoping that to see the growth. And then I was getting plucked out and I wasn't going to get to see the fruit like I, like I anticipated. But what's so cool about with the Lord is he's always watching and he is so proud of you. And he, he, the angels look down and they mm. marvel at his patience and how he works with us. And then to see these fruits blossom, it's just, it's, it's just such a great fragrance. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. And so then all of a sudden you start to see the fruit and then now, now it's blooming. Now it's, mm -hmm. now it's blossoming. You, you're seeing, you know, oranges or whatever it is that you're growing, you know, or your flowers or, you know, you're having all these different things, whatever your garden was designed to do. And so then at that point comes the harvest. And, um, and at that harvest, you know, who, who benefits from this? You know, it could be your family if you're investing in mm -hmm. them. It could be your neighborhood. It could be your community. It could be wherever. And mm -hmm. um, it started to remind me of something that um, I, I've enjoyed in the past, just kind of checking out um, these little local farmer's markets. Mm. You know, when you go to a local farmer's market, it's, it's, uh, it's different than going to a grocery store. A grocery store, you go in there, you get the cart, you have your list, you go through, mm -hmm. boom, 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 mm -hmm. you buy and you go, right? You don't even know where it came from. 
Yeah. You don't know who planted it. Yeah. Uh, you just know that it's going to cost you this much and it's going to be pretty good, hopefully, and, and then you'll take it home, right? Well, a farmer's market is completely different. Uh, so one of the one of the cool things I love about it is that the farmer's market is more organic. You know, a uh, lot more organic produce is grown there. Um, it's uh, perfectly ripe. That's when they because it's going to be taken that day or the day after. So they they cut it. Uh, you know, they harvest it the day the day before. It's uh, more nutritious because it's more organic. Uh, it's more flavorful. I don't know if you've ever had organic mm -hmm. tomatoes in comparison to store bought. Mm -hmm. uh, my gosh, the the flavor is just so good. Mm -hmm. Um, there will be less or no chemicals used because they're using different plants to ward off the bugs. Uh, it's locally grown, awesome. which is which helps the community. Invest, right? Absolutely, invest in your community. Yeah, and the and then the the cool thing about the the farmers market is that there are preparation tips that are shared by the growers. So the growers will say, "Hey, this is what I do with this." vegetable or this is what I do with this fruit or I make this or hey let's try some here I cook some of this you could try some of this and this you get to taste a little of what they just grew mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and um it, and so these things are shared by the growers and and there's social socialization you know you get to know these people if it becomes a normal part of your week where you shop there you get to know these people because they're growing it in their backyard or wherever it is that they have this and and then the interesting thing about these farmers market is that they can be anywhere they can be on main street they can be in city centers, in parks, parking lots, sidewalks, mm -hmm. shopping centers, front yards, backyards, mm -hmm. uh, swap meets, community gardens. It can be anywhere. And uh, that just kind of reminded me of the church. You know, the church is like a... Everything be, reminds like a, him of the church. <laughs> should be like a farmer's market, you know? Not just a grocery store where we're just putting something together and bam, and we're just kind of running people through. Mm -hmm. But it should be like a farmer's market. Right. Where because so we all come with what God is doing in our lives and we all celebrate that. Yeah. And our fragrance, you know, um, it makes me think of that verse in 2 Corinthians. It says, Thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and manifests through us the sweet aroma of the knowledge of Him in every place. For we are a fragrance of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the one an aroma from death to death and life to life. I just, we are a fragrance of the Lord. People forget, like we've been told we have the mind of Christ and we think, do we really? Like, why do I still make dumb choices? Um, but I think like what Enrique is saying is the church is a farmer's market. We just got to set up and show up because when we show up, we're bringing such value to mm -hmm. everything that's there mm -hmm. so that when people come to church it's not just for one person up in front it's to experience the that's community right. at large that's why diversity is so good that is why you live among the people that you serve that is why it's so important that you don't be a churchgoer that just sits in a pew and leaves that's not what God intended mm -hmm. he intended people to be in relationship intimately so that lives can change deeply People can love deeply. Hurts can be healed completely. That's the whole reason why we gather. Mm -hmm. so. You know, um, that's why it's important if, if you're not in a small group to find one. Mm -hmm. uh, many of you will naturally go into a small group. You might have friends that like to go bicycling, mm -hmm. and that's your small group. And so that might be your place. That mm -hmm. might be the place where you're bringing your fruit of what God is showing you, and you're bringing it into that place. Uh, it could be a church ministry. It could mm -hmm. be a, a, mm -hmm. in a church building. Um, if you look at the beginning of the church age in Acts chapter 2, you know, they were meeting from home to home. They were breaking bread. They were just living life. Mm -hmm. And it was so organic. And spiritually, God was opening all these doors for them to be able to, to impact. And uh, one, of the, one of the interesting things is that everyone contributed, like, like mm -hmm. Santa said. You know, it's like everyone was a part of it. And uh, in Corinthians 14, 26, it says, um, Beloved friends, what does all this imply? When you conduct your meetings, you should always let everything be done to build up the church family. Whether you share a song of praise, a teaching, a divine revelation, or a tongue and interpretation, let each one contribute what strengthens others. So it was to be a contribution of all people together. You see, God has revealed things to you mm -hmm. that you can share with someone else, yep. that you can help them. It's kind of like going to a farmer's market. You know, the, all the farmers, all the gardeners, they get together and they start 
they start sharing tips. Hey, here's what I'm doing. Hey, I noticed that your plants are you know, they're, they're healthy. They're huge. What are you doing? Oh, I'm doing this, or I use this fertilizer, and or I'm trying this, and I'm mm-hmm. trying this, or I brought this plant, you know, to to keep these bugs away and what have you. And so they share that because they there it's a community effort. You know, they really appreciate the the being able to grow something organically mm-hmm. and be able to show what they've done. You know, it's it's taken a lot of work, you know, and a lot of love to go into those plants. And so, which kind of reminds me at the end of the story in the Bible, there's... The great big story that we're all a part of. The great you're, big story. You're the, guest, you're the guest in your big story. You're that's, the main attraction. That's right. And so there's a, um, there's a final, like a final harvest, right? There's a final gathering of all people. And, um, and uh, the Apostle John sees this vision. And he says, after this, I looked and behold, right in front of me, I saw a vast multitude of people, an enormous multitude, so huge that no one could count, made up of victorious ones from every nation, every tribe, people, group, and language. They were all glistening in glistening white robes, standing before the throne and before the lamb with palm branches in their hands. So here's this picture that John the Apostle sees, where he sees uh, uh, multitudes of people that you couldn't even count them. Mm -hmm. You know, that was a harvest of Mm -hmm. of multiples of people, different languages, different Mm -hmm. cultures, different backgrounds, and um, different people groups and tribes and nations. I mean, you're talking the multiples of people, and they're all together celebrating the one, celebrating the lamb. You know, and they had in their hands these palm branches in their hands. And it's like, it reminds me of the prayer that Jesus had before he left, uh, before he died, actually. He prayed for his disciples, and then he he prayed for us. And I've shared this before, and I want to just kind of bring it back to that, and we'll close. It says in the, um, Jesus says, I in John 17, he says, I am not praying just for these followers. I am also praying for everyone else who will have faith because of what my followers will say about me. So he was talking about the us. Mm -hmm. He says, I want all of them to be one with each other, just as I am one with you. He was speaking to his father, and you are one with me. I also want them to be one with us. Then the people of this world will believe that you sent me. It's very exciting. You know, when he talks about every tribe, every nation, every tongue, I, I think some of the most glorious experiences we've had with the Lord. I know when I've been to the Philippines and I'm worshiping with people, I don't know. I don't even know their language. But we can stand arm in arm and sing, how great thou art. Or, you know, it's funny. When, when you look at a church that you attend, bless the churches that have diversity. We loved when we were part of Benita and mm-hmm. in San Diego. The church was so diverse. You looked around the room in every nation, every tongue, every language. There were so many in the room, and it just brought such flavor. And so does that mean if you go to a church that you don't have that, it's a bad thing? No. But continue to look at ways to enrich your life, your family's life. Who do you have over for dinner? Who do you expose yourself? What do you open your eyes to? Mm-hmm. Anyway, it's just, it's just a very exciting thing to, um, to know that at the great harvest, at the great end, it'll be forever the eye will see mm-hmm. people of everywhere it's kind of like when you see the poppy seeds in california and the rolling hills and they're all in blossom you just you look at the mount you look at the hillsides and you just you get this emotion of just like look at all these beautiful wildflowers everywhere mm-hmm. especially when there's multicolors. it's just incredible so anyway i i just good word tonight brother thanks, thanks son you should pray it out I'll yeah love it. it's it's the um but i i want to tie it with what my wife said you know it's a fragrant Mm-hmm. It's a fragrance that uh, it's it's sweet, you know. People love it. They, mm-hmm. It's so they're fragrant. drawn to it. Yes. They're going to be drawn to learn more about the Lord when they see you yes. just blossoming where you're planted. Yeah. So continue to be fragrant. Yep. Amen. And we are so excited to be sharing this journey with you. And uh, like I said, always send us off a note if you need prayer, or, or even just let us know what you think, or if it's encouraged you and encourages us. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to close in prayer? Sure. Father, thank you, Lord, uh, just for what you do in our lives. Thank you that you complete the work you started. Thank you, God, that you uh, just provide us opportunities to be a fragrance of you, Lord God. Um, Thank you for the fruit that exists in our lives. And I pray, God, that you continue to help us to be uh, diligent and uh, intentional, Lord God, in growing this beautiful garden 
with our own, our own hearts, Lord. Ones that we could share with one another. Mm -hmm. We can encourage each other, Father, and that, uh, Lord, that one day we would all be able to celebrate what, what we just read. That every nation, every tribe, every language, Father, would be together as one. Mm -hmm. And so, God, thank you for that. I pray blessings upon everyone that hears these messages. And we pray, pray that you would open up every door of opportunity for them to connect with others around them. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. See you next week. All right, take care. Why don't you have to...